I when I went up for my extra walk yesterday, I listened to uh, Steli Efti and Heidi Shah. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> I'm going to have to email him or tweet him and tell him he's been mentioned throughout the last ten weeks on the podcast. <laughs> Anyway, they cheered me up immensely while I was trudging around in the wind and the rain because, of course, autumn has now arrived with a, with a vengeance. Own It, Your Business and Your Life, with Nicola Cairncross and Judith Morgan. In this podcast, we're going to cover everything you need to embrace to become a successful entrepreneur, marketing money, and much, much more. How to create a business doing just what you love. How to own it, your business and your life. This one will be fast, funny, feisty, and very lively. So sit back and enjoy the show. Judith, how are you this morning? I'm good, Nicola. How are you? I've got a Fitbit. Oh, have you? <laughs> <laughs> well, are you a Fitbit? Does this mean you are a Fitbit or going to become one? Well, you never know, do you? It's a long way off, put it that way. But um, I, I, in the in the spirit of what you measure increases, I decided the only way to start taking exercise was to shame myself into doing it. And I've got myself a Fitbit. I bought the wrong one. I bought a big chunky man's one instead of a girly one. But never mind. And um, and it tells me how many steps I take every day, which is um, around the 900 to 1,000, because I just potter about my house usually and go around the co-op. But yesterday, after about two weeks of wearing it, I did find myself going the long way to the shops in order to clock up an extra 1,000 steps. In order to appease the machine? Well, I don't know if it, what it is. I think it's just the fact that I've, I'm becoming aware how desperately unfit I am and and something about seeing it in neon letters on my wrist is making me take action so but I'm, I'm a long way off I mean I managed to clock up 2,800 steps yesterday and five flights of stairs but I'm a long way off the 10,000 steps they recommend per day. I don't think it matters if you went up from 1,000 to 2,000 in a fortnight that's good you've doubled it, you've doubled it already well done. Yeah. Incremental change darling I think actually if we go to Hail Mary at it, it's it, it's destined to fail. I think incremental change is by far the best way. Well, it's, it's, it's you know, being an all or nothing black or white kind of girl, I find that kind of um, incremental change yeah. quite difficult, but you never know. Oh, I'm I'm like, why we start so many things and change our minds and move on, Nicola. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> well, how's your week been then? Well, I've been exactly the opposite of you. I've been to a, my sister-in-law's 60th birthday party, from which I got in at four o'clock in the morning. Oh, it's so. been an endless round of, I mean, even though I didn't have a drop to drink, as you know, I don't really drink. Uh, I, it's been an endless round of hangover cures ever since, because I just feel so discombobulated by this out all night partying back home at four o'clock in the morning thing. So I had to have some recoup time, quite a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us how the quiz went. Because you were doing a quiz. It went, well, yeah, it went reasonably. The quiz itself went well. I forgot to factor in something about my family. And given that we're all 60 years old, I can't imagine how I overlooked this. But the noise levels were unbearable so that they wouldn't shut up for me to read the questions. So it, it took a lot longer than either was a good idea for the party or a good idea, really. <laughs> um, but... but uh, I'd forgotten what an argumentative, barracking, shouty bunch my family are. But with that one proviso, it went well. Yeah, I think all families are like that. You get us all together like that around a table, particularly, and especially in a competitive environment, and we all get very shouty as well. I thought they might. I, I, I had this mad idea that they would just quietly listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. I mean, knowing I mean, I've only met a couple of your family and they are quite robust. So <laughs> I can imagine they don't shut up easily. 
<laughs> no, I mean they, they I don't drink, but once they've got a drop inside them, yes, hell yeah. hell hath no fury, yes. It was yeah. really quite loud. Um there was an extremely nice man there who had been my niece's boss at one stage at Barclays Bank in Canary Wharf, and he said you probably think this isn't going very well, but it's going really well, trust me. So actually, I don't know whether he, I, he's not the sort of man to just be nice because oh, okay. I did hear him call my niece a stroppy cow on the same evening. So uh, <laughs> he doesn't mince his words. So I, I think he was telling the truth, and in which case I'm I'm quite happy about that. Oh, that's great. It was your sister-in-law touched that you'd gone to so much effort. She, well, she she was involved in the creation of it, and uh, but she was very touched i think actually yes and I, and, and and i don't think it escaped her how much work had gone into it which was nice oh brilliant brilliant well i'm glad you had a good time even if you do have a non-hangover afterwards <laughs> i did think i could set up a little sideline quizzes for people's significant birthdays because now i know how to do it ah well i obviously being a rampant a narcissist i would love something like that <laughs> well there you go <laughs> So what's, what's fueled your fire this week? Um, helping a complete stranger in America Ooh. who got in touch with me about my newsletter I sent out probably about six weeks ago, which was on the topic of there's no shame in debt. Oh, yes. And she reached out to me and it took us about a month to get into each other's diaries because uh, I was on holiday in August, if you remember. And I was able to recommend to her three routes out of unsecured credit card debt that she hadn't considered before, at least two of, all three of which actually work even better in America than they do in the UK. Uh, so uh, what's fueled my fire is helping a complete stranger. And, and especially when you know that someone, how bad someone's feeling, you know, it, yeah. it must be horrendous and people just still are playing the corporate game, the... the well, you know. the interesting thing about her is she has been a career self-employed, so quite robust. Okay. And she had the very best sort of debt, which is unsecured credit card debt with with the credit card lenders being banks you don't give a flying thing about mm -hmm. uh, because then it's not related to your mortgage or to your business banking or anything like that, Your pers even your personal banking. So that's the very ideal. You don't have any you no know, skin in the deal. That's the very ideal. I was able to offer her good old Mary Hunt's rapid debt repayment calculator if she wanted to do the squeaky clean fast or cheapest route out that lovely blog post the other day from james l toucher about if you can't pay all your bills don't pay your credit cards yeah and uh, get out of debt free .org, which is something that works in the uk but is based on american uh, principles and a fabulous book which i'll put in the show notes because i've forgotten it's by another mary but it's very much about empowerment and understanding how banking works so that you don't need to feel like you've done something wrong yeah shame and and self-disgust and all that stuff yeah yeah okay good stuff well that's that's what about you what what's fueled yours well a love a lovely um word from joe dodds on her timeline which you've brought to my attention which um it says nicola k cross and judith morgan your podcast really made me laugh today i was walking around sainsbury's chuckling to myself it usually <laughs> <laughs> it usually makes me smile but i did myself no favors in public today thanks <laughs> and I'm, not sure, uh, I'm not sure if that last thanks is ironic or, or yeah i think it is it's so you know thanks for making me look a muppet in sainsbury's isn't it yeah joe is a very sensible looking lady I, I do you know what i absolutely love about that it's just the thought that people are walking around doing their day-to-day -day chores and and listening to us two banging on it must be so weird yeah i think it's nice i mean i like audio but i i don't often listen to it when doing something else um and i never go to sainsbury's have the grocery sent around obviously but i do think that's a nice idea that i know liz in um Austria listens when she's doing the washing up and making the supper in her B&B. It is nice to think it's part of people's daily lives, isn't it? I, when I went up for my extra walk yesterday, I listened to uh, Steli Efti and Heike Shah. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> I'm going to have to email him or tweet him and tell him he's been mentioned for about the last 10 weeks on the podcast. <laughs> Anyway, they cheered me up immensely while I was trudging around in the wind and the rain because, of course, autumn has now arrived with a, with a vengeance. Anyway, thank you, Joe. We really appreciate that. We love all the mentions. We love all the um, reviews. Let me do an, un an unashamed plug for reviews now, please, if that's very quickly. Um, reviews are the thing that make you rise up the iTunes charts. We're, uh, we're in the top 80 of what's hot in management and marketing in the UK, and we would love to be higher. That's what brings us um, new listeners who don't actually know us. And 
we will, you know, if, if you haven't done a review yet and you do love the show, please, please come to the website, ownitthepodcast.com. There's a little video that just shows you how to do reviews there, and it's not very difficult, and it would only take you five minutes. So thank you very much in advance. You did say um, a week ago that we passed the milestone of 10,000 downloads, and oh. I was feeling quite, I was feeling quite chuffed about that until I saw a former client of mine, also called Jo. She's had 100,000 downloads, so I that's know. our next target, Nicola. I know. Well, you know, Judith, there is this thing, because you know I'm in quite a lot, a few podcasting communities. There is this thing called Twitter bombing, and I'm not saying that your ex-client is doing it, but she, you know, she may well have got um, a lot of listeners straight away when she was in the. Uh, new and noteworthy charts but a lot of people do this thing called twitter bombing which is where they fire out their podcast um every hour on twitter and and really that and they there's another thing they do where they send people straight to the downloads in um their host so for example we would send people straight to the libsyn link rather than mm. the itunes link and what that does is even if people don't listen to it all the way through it counts as a download I see. So, so there are d different ways to boost your numbers. And while I know totally not saying your client's doing it at all, but that is how a lot of people boost their numbers, especially if they're relying on um, uh, download numbers for, say, sponsorship. And, and I think she's been doing it longer than us, Nicola, actually. Uh, and she is pretty savvy on social media. So I don't know what she's doing, but yeah. um, I think actually she's just been podcasting longer than us. Well, I'm using uh, meetedgar.com and... Yeah. I, that's quite good for podcasters because it brings in um, every new episode via RSS automatically. So you don't have to manually go and add it to meet Edgar. But you do have to just go and put in the picture um, manually because it doesn't pick up the picture for some reason. I don't know why not. Um, but, the, yeah, that's definitely having an impact because I'm making sure that it's, you know, it's, it's automated and going out more often that rather than just us remembering to tweet it occasionally. Hmm. So that's that's something we can do. But, no, I'm, you know, I'm thrilled by the 10,000 downloads because I know that they're absolutely genuine. And, yes. and that, you know, it's a bit like having, to, you know, 3,000 Twitter followers. You know, I know they're absolutely genuine Twitter followers. Yeah. I've done everything I can to get them. So, yes. real nice. people count. But first, a word from our sponsors. Do you feel isolated and alone in running your own home-based business? Do you have worries, doubts, fears and resistance which sometimes make you feel like giving up? Don't worry. You're not alone. In fact, you're perfectly normal. It can be scary all by yourself. But what if you could learn how to become a confident business owner, how to trust yourself more and grow your income, relax and be more creative and productive? Small Business Big Magic is a unique business mentoring group providing grounded practical support and advice, fast responses to your questions, inspiration and solutions to boost your clarity and help you find direction, focus and success in your life and business. Join Small Business Big Magic today for the friendship and encouragement of others just like you and the enthusiasm of a coach who gets you and your business. There's big magic for your small business at judithmorgan.com. Prime chance of the week then. I thought we might have another bite of the cherry that is time management. And I'll tell you what prompted me bringing this up again this week. It's almost the, the, biz, you know, the, the beginning of my September term and it's busy, busy, busy. And sometimes I think to myself, oh, God, I'm so busy. I've no idea how I'm going to do. It. And I've got lots of extra things I want to fit in like you do in September, you know. And I do understand, you know, if you want something busy, want something doing, ask a busy person. But time management i thought we might come back to um you know what's the best way to organize your working week when you're uh, a solopreneur working at home archival pretty much only to yourself and your clients obviously i've got a different twist on this this time because good uh, good, good, good good yeah <laughs> um i've been experiencing strange mixed feelings about my task list and what to do and things because you know I normally just sit down at nine o'clock and work till five or six or seven even and, and just crack on and, and you know never have a break or anything like that but um, I've got someone staying with me at the moment and um, you know there are other things going on in my life and I've been finding that I've been only able to do the bare minimum um, the apps things that absolutely must get done and the other the thing that's interesting about that is that I could have been doing that all the way along <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But instead of which, I've been filling up my time with stuff that may or may not have had an impact. So uh, when I'm in the when you're in the position where you can only do the bare minimum to keep things going because you are strapped for time, um, that focuses your mind quite wonderfully, I think. 
I agree. I think I totally agree with you. Yes. Um, it's a bit like in the run up to a holiday. And it's been a while since I've followed our holiday. But when I've had proper businesses in the past, you have proper holidays. Um, and in the lead up to the holiday, you've got this massive, great big in tray and you think the idea that if I could get all that done before I go away on holiday. And then about two days later, you think there's no way I can get all of that done before I go away on holiday. So you start sorting it by what must be done before you go away on holiday and which will just have to wait until you get back. Um, and I remember my brother used to have a policy of um, he would he's, he's even more. I don't want to say anally retentive because it's rude, but you know what I mean? Yeah. He's even more perfectionist control freak than I am. And he had a little system when he was a, a proper, proper corporate type. For all I know, he still operates it where every time you handle a piece of paper, which, of course, we don't really do anymore, do we? But mm -hmm. there must be a modern equivalent of that. But he used to put a little mark on uh, like a little green mark or something on a piece of paper when he handles it. So he would see how many times he handled it before he'd actually actioned it. And I've got this new thing now on my computer, you've probably heard of it, which is called hmm, Time side, Sidekick by HubSpot. Oh. And it shows you when people open your emails and have they opened your emails and what did they do when they opened your emails and blah, blah, blah. And it, it shows me a little message um, and I can see how many times people open an email from me before they action it. God, that's fascinating. And, and what it shows me, well, it's fascinating from an internet marketing perspective, which is, I think, it's about email management. But what it shows me is how how many, how indecisive other people are. They have a look and they have another look and they have another look and, you know, they have another look. It's the equivalent of my brother's little green mark. You've got to make it multiple times. Um, so people are not very decisive. And I think being decisive, making a fast decision about what you're going to do is a time management trick as well, which perhaps you get better at over the years. I'm not sure. Yeah, that do dump or delegate thing as well. I mean, I've got a pile of papers. Why can I never? I've got a pile of papers. It's about how it's about two inches deep and it's all bits of paper that I either can't action now or can't decide what to do with. And it's a bit like an mm. inbox, but it sits on top of my printer and it, it's so annoying. Yes. <laughs> And what do you print out then, Nicola? Because I don't, I don't really print much anymore. What do you not, print out? What are they? Well, there's there's some action sheets for for a, a course I've just joined. There's um stuff, you know, how to set up an affiliate in Infusionsoft, which I suppose I could just leave. Them. It's on my. I'm scared. It's things I'm not. I'm scared I won't be able to find again if I don't print them off. And I'm also not very good at moving information from one tab to another. I have to. I don't have two screens. I suppose I should have two screens. That would help, wouldn't it? it then I'd have to have two tabs open next to each other. But I find if, you know, for example, if, you, if you're if you going down a list of email actions and um, each one has to be actioned in a different tab, I find it easier to print them off and work from the printed version. I do think there are there is the occasional email that I have to print off and reply to it from that. Usually when people are asking me multiple, multiple, multiple topics and questions in the same one, yeah. I, I try not to print. It's not even that I'm particularly a tree hugger. It's just not efficient is it no it isn't um it isn't you're right do you use any time tracking to tell you what um you know how long you work on different things no because i don't really do that sort of work anymore but the one you mentioned just now is the one that one of my uh, my clients were sharing and actually it would work if a profit accumulator that one you were just talking about yeah because i was thinking i really need to stop uh, time trade doesn't it Time trade. That's it. Time trade. Remind me. Remind me. Time trade. Yes, that's right. Somebody yeah. mentioned that. In fact, there's another one that, that somebody mentioned as well. But no, I don't have to do that sort of work anymore because I'm either with I tell you what I do do is, is I use Outlook and I do exactly what my diary tells me. Uh, so in this week, when I'm slightly panicky, having taken out all of those ones that we agreed we didn't need to have in our diary because it made us feel stressed remember those yeah they, they, i now put those on a little heart i put them on a little heart shaped sticky on my daily journal and tick them off when i do them there and it's better actually and i've got a new system there but what i've done this week is i've got a lot of projects i want to spend an hour or two um in doing some research on so i've actually put the blocks of time in my diary now it does make me look very busy and that is quite stressful I find yeah. and so this morning I've had this debate with myself because I've been up quite a long time before you and I spoke and this afternoon I'm going to write a newsletter and my my uh, addiction is always wanting to get ahead instead of waiting to the time when I've allotted that I will think about and write my newsletter yeah. I always like to try and rob a bit of time earlier and think oh what should I write about in my newsletter and, and, and the sort of intuitive response I got from my higher self was just relax 
we'll do that after we've done the podcast. You know, we don't need to keep getting ahead all of the time. That's my disease, which is I'm so busy, I need to do some of tomorrow's jobs today. You know, and that ties into the entrepreneur's um, trap of of always feeling that if you just did a little bit more, success would come a little bit quicker. Which is so if we could just get ahead, we could relax. That's mine. I mean, frankly, relax now. We can do tomorrow's work tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. So, so summing all this up, then, um, don't don't keep handling bits of paper. Make sure that you're. Um, is is that awfully distracting though? When that thing pops up to tell you someone's reading your email. Uh, well, you can turn it on and off like all of these. It's a Chrome extension, I think. You can yeah. turn it all. You can turn. You know, that's up to you how you set it up. Yeah, I know that Steve's got it because he, he can see when his clients have read his emails. Well, I think that's useful. Yeah, absolutely. Especially if you're waiting for some information for a website, you can see. Yes, you can yes. See. But, but that means other people are using it on me. Yes. And they're seeing how many times I'm reading their emails. Yes, I know when you've looked at my emails. Yes, no, I do. Not. And, and better than that, it gives me a lovely little picture of you with that red scarf on when you do it. Oh, I feel violated now. <laughs> Uh, you've, that is an invasion of my privacy, isn't it, really? Well, is it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. How, I think you should have a look at it because I think you'll like it. Well, I probably will because I'm a control freak as well, but I don't like it. <laughs> okay, so Actually, I'm not really using it for, uh, you know, so I had a lot of new clients. I want to make sure they've all read the email that tells them how to get going at the beginning of the term. And there was that, that helps me know who, like, um, like a, a, a shepherd, I've got to go round with my sheepdog and rounds a few last stragglers up. That yeah, kind of that's very, yeah, that's yeah. that's very interesting. I'm going to try it, but I'm 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 not sure how I feel about it. So let's just recap um, on the things that we find most useful on time management. Um, mine yeah. is mine is that I only ever think to myself, what one thing must I get done today to move my business forward? That's my. That's business. a nice one. That's a nice one. I think a system, any system that supports you and makes you feel better about yourself. So I had a client visit yesterday who had. A rather complex four notebook system, but it worked for her. Four notebooks. <laughs> yeah. So in the pink one, I do this and the blue one, I do that and the buff one, I do that. It doesn't matter if it's a system that works for her. My friend Susie, who teaches maths, I've told I think I've told you this story before. When she first she teaches maths at a sort of government level, she teaches maths teachers be better at maths. And when she first started learning how to do it, she made us all do as a sort of dinner party game made us do this mental arithmetic sum. And then she said, and how did you do it? And I said, X, Y, and Z. And my brother went, oh, no, as if I'd done it wrong. And she said, it doesn't matter as long as you can get an answer is the point. And, you know, it doesn't matter what people's systems are as long as they have one that supports them. And try not to flit. So, for instance, I'm well aware that Outlook is outdated. Who cares? It works for me and I'm sticking with it. Yeah. The only thing about Outlook is it's, it's on your own computer. So that's, you know, I'm trying very much to be completely in the cloud now. But all my emails are web based. So they're there. OK. All right. OK. So you could yeah. so if you lost your Outlook tomorrow, it would only be your diary you'd lose. Uh, no, I wouldn't. It's all backed up. Oh, OK. OK, cool. Cool. I'll let you off then. Yeah. <laughs> so but the point is, you know, so I don't have my head turned by younger people saying, have you tried trello and the, the, no i don't need to thanks got a system that works yeah. so i can immediately go don't need to look at that nothing for me there yeah another shiny object another shiny object yeah, yeah. we're talking a bit no and i'll talk about another shiny object later um so see i'm trying to get to the point where i have nothing in my diary every afternoon as you know and that's mm. working quite well actually um so then i can choose and the idea is that by freeing up big blocks of time i can do things that are more creative like yeah. work through content machine by dan norris and start to blog properly again and write a newsletter like you do that's got mm. actual, you know content in it rather than just a round yes. of links i mean i'm not even doing a round of links this week. i don't know why I, f I feel very um like i've got nothing new to say at the moment but that's and that's a good that's a good reason for not communicating, to be honest with you. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, you can you can force yourself a bit. I know what you mean about that. The, the well, we don't have anything new to say, really, because we know what we know. And it's just finding interesting ways of recycling it, isn't it? Absolutely. Because the core issues that clients have do not change. Uh, no. And new clients come along, new potential clients come along. who have got those core issues and you have to be writing about it. Otherwise, they don't, you know, like no. No communication. It, it, I, I've heard some really good expressions recently. One is um, that you don't make money with your mouth shut. 
and, and that goes for newsletters too. So, you know, the people who send the most emails make the most money rather than read yeah. the emails, you know. So those, yeah. I'm very aware, I, my mouth is shut and I'm not sending enough emails. Yes, and I haven't blogged at all in 2016, having done it 365 times in 2015, which is the same thing. My, my writing mouth is shut and I don't feel, I, I do mildly miss it. I haven't got time to do it at the moment. Is my, are my, is my business suffering? No, I don't think it is actually. Maybe because I've got a, a plug in recycling old ones. Yeah, that would help as well. So, yeah, so those those things like me, Edgar, that we've talked about, your plug in yeah. recycling old, old posts, yeah. is it? Yeah. Yes, uh, I'm not. To be honest, I'm not sure. I could check. There are two or three of them, and I never really know which one's working. Okay, it's just you know anything like the, the time saves time on repetitive tasks. I think frees up time for creative stuff. Yeah. So that, and, that. and 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 other things like we know most of our clients are women working at home. You know, get a cleaner, even if it's only once a month, and get the groceries sent in. You know, try and outsource from the bottom. But yeah, I like your point that you made at the very beginning, which is in a week when one's a bit short of time, we can't do, we, we simply haven't got time for the stuff that doesn't really matter. Why do we ever do any of the stuff that doesn't really matter? Yeah, you've reminded me I need to outsource a research, research job now. And, um, you know, when you think you can pay $20 for 50 contacts from a web directory, for example, and, and you know, trying to do it yourself, it just doesn't make sense. Talking of which, by the way, my cleaner has gone to Greece for five weeks to stay in her own house. How dare she? And yes. I said to her, I'll be swimming in filth by the time you get back. <laughs> Brace yourself for a lot of work. <laughs> I can keep it reasonably tidy. I'm not mad about cleaning, to be honest. No. So the kitchen's a bit of a mess when the cleaner comes and the bathroom is too. I do I do keep it to levels of, you know, basic human decency. And if a client comes around, then I have to do an interim whiz round myself but which i had to yesterday but oh yeah. god cleaners what could we how could we manage without i don't know well i certainly couldn't even when i was at my poorest that was one of my investments i made in in my future success yeah me too it just isn't a good use of your time anyway i think we've done time to death now that was rather good wasn't it i think we have yes so i, I just want to make one more point actually which is um the lady that came to visit me yesterday is a mum and can only do her businessy stuff two or three days a week and I think the people who work less than 40 hours a week have to be more efficient and can achieve the same output. So don't spend 40 hours a week just because you've got it would be my other tip. Yeah. And also, you, you know, you don't just because you're not actually doing. I mean, James Franco makes this point very well. He, he thinks about his business on a surfboard. He can't do anything about any of it. But he finds that being doing something that takes up his body, you know, occupies his body, frees his mind to have ideas. And we all often say about having ideas in the shower, don't we? It's because you're yeah, in the shower, when driving the car, when you're when you're in a trance, and actually with my colouring as well, it it, it it distracts the lizard brain. The, the lizard brain. Well, so the one that worries. It's yeah. the brain that worries, isn't it? The one that nags you. Yeah. So the point there is that if you, even though you're not actually actively working in your business, you could be working on your business because you're thinking about it while you're mm. watching mm. Littlands run around in the smelly ballpark. And actually, I think that working on that works better because you might have a genius idea about how to manage your time better as well. <laughs> beautifully, beautifully rounded off there, Judith. Beautifully rounded. Thanks, beloved. Thank you. What's the word of the week then? You go first. Predictable, mm. as in revenue, sales, and systems. So I've got this new little wheeze, which, you know, um, I mentioned, I think, last week, where um, people who've got traffic, we can turn it into leads if you're page one of Google and you're not converting your traffic to leads. So um, I've, I've made several sales of that now. I think I've got about six. And um, it's it's how to make that predictable, that how to set up a sales system so that that's predictable, that doesn't depend on me. Because the whole point about that one is it's not um, – a high, a high creative concept marketing strategy kind of thing it's this is what we do do you want it or what and um so you know theoretically i could outsource the sales of that and even the implementation of that and just sort of supervise uh, so now I've, i'm just thinking about how to go about setting up that that predictable system so that do you know what i like about this wheeze is it's incredibly simple yeah it is. And even someone came back to me yesterday and said, oh, you know, could you could set this up with our MailChimp account, couldn't you? And I said, nope, it has to be done through my AWeber account and you yeah. get the leads. But we could, we could set up a Zapier 
so that every new lead gets fired into your MailChimp, but that's your 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 area of you know responsibility. So yeah. it's a very clear, clean cut offering. I said that's how we can offer it. So no squid, no squidgy boundaries. Excellent. For no, you. I know. Isn't that cool? <laughs> yeah, that's very good. You know, it it just yeah, that, and that's why it's so affordable because there's no no squidgy boundaries. Yeah. <laughs> my boundaries will not be squidged on this well this is the holy grail isn't it we're, we're totally looking for something where we're not squidged yeah and the, and the, you know again several of the people who've applied for this have then gone on to say and what can you do for me on facebook ads yeah but you know the other thing about this one the non-squidgy people first of all you start with them on a non-squidgy basis and they're complete strangers with whom you can go on to be non-squidgy because they've never known you in your squidgy days that's very true they don't know my my performer squidgy past <laughs> no <laughs> Recovered squid. Yeah, <laughs> a recovering squid. No, I'm, yeah. one. I'm a squid survivor. <laughs> <laughs> what about you then? Uh, my word is surprise. Okay. Never assume. So I have clients, and sometimes you think they're going to turn up and say X, and they turn up and say Y. Yes. Like, like um, I've got a very determined, very academic client um, who in the six, eight months we've been working together, is very determined, very focused. We're quite sort of, uh, hang on a minute, uh, left brain, right brain. We're left brain, uh, we're left brained about it all, which is very sort of matter of fact and um, is it worth, you know, measurable results, all that kind of thing. Um, coincidentally, there's been a massive change in her private life, which we've not really discussed because She's a very emotionally contained person. And then she turned up last week and I was thinking we were going to have an academic, dry, results orientated session. No, the whole thing is under review now because of what's happened to her life. And so never show up to anything assuming it's going to go like that when it might go like this. Yeah, very true. I, yeah, clients used to constantly surprise me in the money gym as well. Surprise. Yeah. Surprise is my word of the week. Yeah. yeah. Lovely, lovely word. And a surprise to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Project updates then, you go first. Yeah, I'm going to give you mine in money this week. So we've we've been on this for two to three months or so, haven't we? And I've made 1,100 in sterling, 1,971 in US dollars and 51 in Canadian dollars, which is a round total of 2,400 GBP. Okay, so this is on what particularly? All of them, everything, oh, all right. added together. I went through and added everything together. Um, 1100 from Profit Accumulator, 1971 from BY's Trader, 51 from one of my new things. I've added in all my little dollars and the, 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 some of them are quite small, but they add up to a, re, you know, a, a chunk of money I wouldn't have had if we hadn't started fiddling about in other things. So all, all of that's that's extra income on top of your business. Yes, extra income on top. Of, yeah, exactly. Extra income. And also I've met a lot of interesting people who I wouldn't have met. So although the first thing I went to, which is it went into, which was the scratch cards, failed to launch for the second time yesterday, it doesn't matter because I've met so many interesting people who've led me in the direction of two thousand four hundred pounds worth of extra income in a couple of months. Yeah, well, that's really good, isn't it? And I think it has opened our minds a bit to other things that we wouldn't have necessarily considered. Well, it's opened your lot, and then you. Yeah, it has. It has actually, and actually, for me, this is apart from profit accumulator, it's largely passive, which is my goal with this section. Yeah. Yes. Good stuff. Well, my pro pro profit accumulator is chugging along. I had a, a bit of a, a down couple of days last week. Um, I don't know whether I'm in a hiatus of where I can't. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? All, all of the offers seem to be incredibly complicated to me now. In the second half of the training, they are, Nicola. Yeah, yeah. I think I think I think it, try and think of it as advanced training, which is how you get to be a ninja. Yeah, well, I've 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 used I'm using your system to to keep track of my rollovers where I have to do yeah. five bets and things like that. But I had um you know there was one yesterday where I thought, uh, you know if you if you make ten bets in a week of more than three pounds or more, you get a free bet of ten pounds. So I thought, well, how hard can that be? So 
I went in, but all of the um, things that were offered for that particular bookies were not particularly good, well matched. So, mm-hmm. so I ended up losing two pound thirty, one pound eighty, and I thought, hang on a minute, if I do ten yeah. bets like this, I'm going to lose more than a tenner. So yeah. three bets. And sometimes that's happened. But I think one of the, I think we're being a little bit short sighted there because what I think he's doing in that section some of the time is having the account open so that next time when you're, when we finish the training, we've got all the accounts open. And as offers come through, we'll be able to do them in the moment because we're ready type of thing. Yeah. But I, I agree with you. Sometimes you bring your logical brain to it. It doesn't seem to make any sense at all, does it? Yeah. So then I didn't do anything for, for, well, Saturday was a bit of a write-off for various personal reasons. And Sunday I decided to take a day off. So that, that brought the daily average down to about £25 profit a day. So then I'm thinking, oh, my God, is this really worth it? So but I've, I'm, I'm back on I'm back on psychologically on it again this week, mainly because I've been looking for lots of um, – uplifting um psychological stuff from another source and uh, that's that's infected my mood generally to want to try harder with everything so that's quite good okay. very good yeah. and the uh, the other thing have you finished on your project updates by the way i have yes i just uh, hijacked it rather there um, you have. so yeah four six new clients for the for the new cal service but what i find absolutely astonishing. sorry sorry how many four to six or 46 no four to six um yes what i'm saying four to six is that one of them has Two of them have two businesses, and and one of them has a, a third business. They might want. Me I understand. To I understand. I couldn't say. I couldn't understand whether you were saying forty six, i.e., yeah. nearly fifty. No, I'm saying. But I tell you what, I'm finding completely astonishing is how many people don't know what traffic they're getting. And I know I do bang on about this, so rather shockingly, I know. But for heaven's sake, people, if you've got a website, just get. And the other thing I'm astonished at how many web designers are setting up people's websites with admin and admin one two three as a password. It's frighteningly insecure. You, you, you know, please do not let your web designer set up your website with admin anything on the, the username and password. And please ask your web designer to put Google Analytics. It's a work of minutes for a web designer. And it's shocking that they're not putting it in a standard. You've got to know how much traffic your website is getting. That's the basic building block of, of any kind of online success with your website. And, uh, you know, just beggars belief that people don't know how much traffic they're getting. Why are we talking about traffic in project updates? I lost the logic. <laughs> because, there. because one of the things I I have to do when they say, "Oh, I've got a page one Google website," I have to I have to say, "Well, how much traffic?" Yes. Yes. And they say, "Oh, I don't know." So yesterday, I ended up putting Google Analytics into three websites for someone just because I couldn't tell him whether it was worth him signing up for my service or not. Yeah. Without knowing what kind of traffic they're getting, and that was yeah. when he sent me the logins for his website, and they were all admin admin one two three. I thought, yeah. oh my God, what is this? These web designers, oh yeah, they're just oh, criminally neg- negligent. Sorry, ran over. <laughs> I tell you, I, I would like to talk just for ten seconds about um, web designers. The majority of them are all about design, not about the commerce, not about understanding how a website's got to work. That's very true. So they do the bare minimum. Well, I don't think they're trying to do the bare minimum. I think they're trying to do a nice, arty, pretty, designery thing. Yeah. rather than what we want is a website that works and i'm not convinced people who are listening to us might understand that but i'm not convinced that when a new client comes along and i say and they show me their dismal website and they say right you're going to need somebody to work that over well i've got a friend who no we're going to go to somebody who knows what a website that works is i'm going to do i'm going to do tumblr no we're not doing tumblr we're doing wordpress you know I, I it's again most of quite a lot of what we know is a well-kept secret we're streets ahead of the ordinary mortal yeah i know and the ordinary business owner as well which i yeah. find astonishing really yeah but hey, don't get me started again <laughs> no 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 no, no. So tell me who or what's impressed you. Well, I've been reading a book called a, a non-work book. You'll be oh. astonished to hear called Bone Clocks by David. Oh, I've read it. I've read it. Yes, good, isn't it? Yeah, I wasn't sure for a while because no, me neither. You know, I, liked, I liked the main protagonist, the girl at the beginning, yeah. um, and then it sort of kept going off into these different scenarios. But that now it's all starting to weave together again. And yeah. it was recommended by Chris Barrow because I asked him for some holiday reading, and he he likes a bit of 
thriller fantasy, doesn't he? And um, and this is, I suppose you'd categorise it, but it's just a really well written book. He, have, he apparently has written a book called Cloud Atlas. So you he has, which made into a film similar, this with this kind of lots of different characters all linking together. I haven't seen that film; it was too wacky for me. I thought Bone Clots was going to be too wacky for me as well, but you do stumble across a few characters in there that you really like. I like the sort of Slightly hopeless, slightly overweight academic writer who was divorced. Um, oh, I liked and, him as well. Yeah. Yes, I liked him. And I, I was quite sad when certain characters moved out of the book. Well, I also liked the, the journalist husband who went to the Middle East a lot. I liked him. And you, you miss them when they move on. Some come back, but not all of them do. Yeah. It does tie together very nicely. I'm not going to spoil the end of you. Very fat book that when you get to the end of it, you think, oh, I've done something quite improving there. Oh, well, I've, I'm on the final third. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, I'm liking it. Bone Clocks by David Mitchell. Like it a lot. OK, OK. So that's who or what's impressed you. Yourself reading a non-work book or the book of, of the work of David Mitchell or what? Well, just anyone who can write a, a rattling good story, really, because yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not good at that kind of, kind of writing. I can't imagine putting a plot together to save my life. But um, you, know the, you know they have this literary festival in Hay on Y once oh, a year. Yes. There was some fantastic... The BBC recorded interviews with quite a lot of fantastic writers and David Mitchell, talking about the Bone Clocks, was one of them. Really Riveting, interesting man, actually, as well. And um, I like the fact that he's written all sorts of different books as well. Oh, I must say, it's probably on YouTube somewhere, is it? Yeah, uh, it might be, yes. Uh, BBC, I think it was two or four. All, I mean, including Neil Gaiman, I mean, lots of Jermaine Greer. Really, they were some of the best telly I've watched in 2015. I'm typing it. There is an interview with, with David Mitchell, yeah. Right. Okay, good stuff. What about you then? What's impressed you? Are you there? I am. Hello? Hmm. Good, yes. So shall I tell you what's impressed me? Yes. <laughs> Go on then. Um, at my sister-in-law's birthday party on Saturday night, I, I, there were a lot of people I hadn't seen for about 10 years since my 50th. Um, and I was impressed by the degree to which we are survivors. When we get to 50 and 60 years old, we've gone through death, divorce and redundancy. And in that 10 years, most of the people had somewhere between two and five years in the wilderness where they were changing their career. They divorced their wife and nobody would speak to them because they behaved like a cad or something like that. Uh, and they were reinventing themselves after their day job had lobbed them out the door. So quite a lot of philosophical discussions about um choosing happiness gritting your teeth and getting on with it deciding not to become an old fogey still being engaged by modern issues you know what it takes to survive which is to proactively manage your emotions and your intentions which isn't easy at the beginning of the crisis but which you come to understand as you come through it that's very deep quite deep it was quite deep for a party <laughs> yeah, it is. And and it's interesting because um, my there's there's been all sorts of things happening, you know, with the uh, Shoreham disaster and everything. Yeah. And one of my children, one of my daughter's friends um, died in a he just drove his motorbike into a tree. So just suddenly this last week, you know, so they're all watching them all try and come to terms with that. That's quite an interesting thing. So obviously it's the first thing like that that they've experienced. Yes. Yeah, and, and and they're all they're all talking about it on Facebook and um and how they feel and, and everything and watching them all expressing their emotions is in, interesting because you know, like you say you know part of life is learning to well not control your emotions but feel and express them and, and process them isn't it? I definitely think you've got to feel and and express them because that's part of the if you if you suppress them that's not a healthy way of going about anything at all and I think when you're a young person you don't really believe that death. You don't really believe in death, do you? So that first experience, either your granny dying or some friends at school, uh, you know, having a car accident or a motorbike accident, as you say, that that is your first experience often. And if it's somebody of your own generation, it feels much more real. Yeah. And, and as bringing, swinging it back to the entrepreneurial experience as well, we know that most of the time people's success is never about ta the tactics they use. It's about the inner battle of of taking action or being afraid or worrying about what people think about you and all that stuff and, yeah. and so you know the life experience of feeling and processing emotions and and proceeding despite them as we talked about the other week was it was battling on through wasn't it or yes um it's and, uh, yeah 
He's going to say, and on, and on that jolly note, Nicola. <laughs> yeah, well, it, oh, yeah, that's a bit, a bit of a thoughtful end to the episode. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, it's important stuff. And, and you know, it all, it all adds to your backbone, doesn't it? It all adds to your temperament. It all adds to your personality and your strength if you can go through these experiences. And, and Well, the interesting thing is we have no choice about having to go through them. But what we do have a choice about is how, in the final analysis, we're going to respond to them. Cope, respond. Yeah, and carry on. Mm. Okay, well, there you go. Chin up, love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See you next week, love. Yeah, we'll try. Okay. We'll, try we'll try and end on an upbeat note next week. Bye, everyone. Okay. Bye. <laughs> You've been listening to Nicola Cairncross and Judith Morgan. The podcast is called Own It, Your Business and Your Life. Do come and visit us at ownitthepodcast.com. We'd love to hear your feedback. You can find out more about Judith and visit her on her website at judithmorgan.com and you can find Nicola at nicolacairncross.com. 